What up YouTube, Tiger here. Today we're focusing on transportation. Let's get into it. We're gonna focus on the city side, and now I'm gonna talk specifically about tourism, because most people come here to tour and they get, a, they get a feel for Japan. They like it or not, the culture and stuff like that. Honestly, if you really wanna like, get a real feel, be here more than a month, you know? I would say be here for at least a year to, if you want to understand what the culture is truly like. That's just my opinion. But you know, some people are very quick to really catch on to a culture, so you got you might be different. Anyways, tourism. Okay, they have city bikes you can use to get around. They cost you maybe between two dollars and five dollars, and they have like motors and stuff. And like Osaka is like pretty flat, so you can get anywhere you need on these bikes, and it's and it's just fun and exercise to do with your friends and buddies and stuff like that also in tokyo even here we have them so here is mostly hills but it's electric power so like it's gonna make everything very easy for you pedaling up or down hills no problem which is really convenient uh keep in mind most foreigners don't know this so once you like you know come to like a major station go to the information desk you know, and, and get as much information as possible because they, they offer discount tickets for people on tourist visas more than people like me who live here like pretty much permanently. So you, you, you can get so many discounts. They want you to have fun, spend your money, but at the same time they're trying to get you to discounts so you can save money so you can come again, of course, right? So make sure you, you find as many discounts as possible. Also, if you bring your passport in, there's many shops that, you know, you don't have to pay the 8% tax. I have to pay it, but you don't have to pay it. So remember that, like you go to buy your camera, if you want to get some electronics, 8% is a lot, 8% is a lot of money off if you're going to buy like, I don't know, like a $500 product. So, okay, let's talk about trains. Okay, in like Tokyo, the trains like start in the morning around 5 in the morning and they end maybe around two in the morning, so it's, it's kind of convenient. Uh, when you talk about clubs and going out, like, like the clubs don't really stop at two, you know, they don't stop serving alcohol like in America at two. So a lot of people find themselves in situations where they're like, oh my God, the train stopped, right? So this is, this is where it's good to know when the train stops and goes. And so also like if you're going out, a good place to crash, of course, are, you know, capsule hotels because they're a little bit cheaper. Normal hotels, they're a little more pricey. And then uh, McDonald's because McDonald's is open 24 hours. And I see a lot of Japanese people, just they just order some food, eat something, just crash like that. Then at 5 o'clock, they wake up, take the train home, there you go. You just saved yourself like 30 bucks. I'm, I'm not saying that's fun, but people do it, okay? Anyways, back to tourism. Uh, yes, keep in mind subways are always gonna be more expensive. And the reason behind this is because subways get you to a more exact location. Whereas the normal train is gonna be really cheap because it, it, it takes you in a general loop around, around like Tokyo City. So then you're gonna take the other trains like subways to get more into the exact location. So. Yeah, subways are always more expensive than the, the, you know, normal trains. So that's just something you gotta kinda live with. Also, train timing wise, in the city side, trains come every three minutes, okay? If they're gonna be late, typically they're gonna be late by two seconds. So that's good to know, unless you can't wait two seconds. Also, like, trains only stop if there's like a really major disaster, like weather, some kind of accident, or an earthquake. And that's because if the earth shifts and the track is like, you know, like that, and the train's coming, that could be a disaster in itself. So that's the only time trains stop, and disasters don't happen every day here, so you don't have to worry. So trains are good. Okay, what's up about taxis? Like, you're touring around taxis. Taxis are very similar to America. You have a flat rate. Here, for example, is like $7, and that can get me, um, probably down the block, and after that, it's like every, I don't know, kilometer or something like that, they're gonna charge you. So they charge you by distance, which is nice, because in America, some taxis charge you by distance and time. So if you happen to get stuck in traffic, they're still charging you. Here, it doesn't happen. You can be in traffic for the next three hours, and they're only still charging you for only distance, so it's nice. And if you, you know, if you're touring, 
with like your a couple or, or some friends or something and you're all in the same taxi it's gonna be that much cheaper so okay buses buses are pretty good because usually the buses are always connected to either an airport and a major station right so even when, when, when once you get here like say you come to tokyo to, to narita airport they got buses that'll take you right into the city i mean they're probably around 30 bucks and it'll take you about an hour, hour and a half, depending on what city you're going or where you're going. But the buses are very convenient. Um, uh, you should always ask the, the information person about the buses ahead of time. Because every once in a while, some buses don't have bathrooms in these long-term buses. It's really odd. Because, you know, like in America, we have Greyhound. And it's always guaranteed to have a bathroom in it. But in Japan, there's not always guaranteed in everything. At least when it comes to these buses. The long-distance ones. Uh, just getting around the city side again the buses are connected to um, the major stations the major stations is like it's like a hub for everything you know it's a heart for everything so everything's very connected you want to get a taxi at that station bus at that station train at that station you want to go to a department star at that station the movies at the station the station is the major that's why like depending how far you live you know next to the station is how much you're gonna be paying rent for that convenience so if you live right next to the station it's gonna cost you a lot of money we're talking like <laughs> that like to like two thousand five hundred dollars a month just to rent like a like a condo or something just to live maybe one block from the station and that's like eh, that was in yokohama so tokyo is gonna be a lot more than that anyways uh Okay, Shinkansen. This is more like Shinkansen versus like a plane because sometimes people tour and they want to like travel to more than one location. They like start out in Tokyo and they want to travel all the way down south to, to Kyushu or whatever or just they want to stop over here in Osaka. Shinkansen is nice because you, you get these like beautiful nice views and you can plug in your iPhone, charge it, relax, nice seats. Uh, it costs a little bit more than planes. Like I can right now, if I wanted to hop on a plane and go to Tokyo, it would cost me a hundred bucks. That's all. Peach Airlines. I think there's another airlines called Star Star Airlines or something like that. It's like a copy of Peach. But planes are definitely faster and cheaper. But I still, to some degree, prefer Shinkansen because I don't know. It's this amazing train. It goes so fast, and even when you're inside, it doesn't feel like it. You know, and you're going through mountains and stuff, and it's just it's just amazing achievement that Japan made with these things. I, I'm not a train person or nothing, but I'm just saying if you can take a Shinkansen just for that experience the one time, I would do it. And keep in mind, if you're a tourist, you still, you can get discounts for Shinkansen. You know, it'll be a lot cheaper for you than the average Japanese person. So take advantage of any discount you can here, okay? All right, let's talk about working here, okay? Working is a lot different. So when you work, Okay, you have your, your your living location, and you're going to be living a certain distance from the station. Most people live averagely between 15 to 20 minutes away from the station. So you're either walking or taking some form of transportation to the to station. And you're going to take that station to a bigger station and then go to your work. If you're lucky, you live right next to your work and you can just hop, skip, and walk to it. But no one's usually that lucky. Anyways, for example, last year at my job, I worked at a Kiowa and... My my, I lived like 15 minutes away from the station, so I I would take my bike, right? It's a fold-up bike. I'd fold it up, and you, you gotta put your fold-up bikes in a bag. And this bike is really light, like 13 pounds, right? So it's not that big a deal. And then on the train, it's it was like a half hour away, so I never waste time. So during that time, I'm, I'm studying Japanese, like the whole time the way there and the way back so once I get off that train to go to work it's another like 30 minute walk so I unfold my bike and then I ride to work do do what my job come home and yeah so you have to find some sort of transportation to get to the station that's able to be on you know the train itself and then you know take you to your work which is really difficult. I started with the skateboard, which is like, it worked kind of, but it's not, it wasn't fast enough and it didn't work as well in rain, you know? Then the kickboard, it did okay in rain, but again, I felt like it just wasn't fast enough. So that's why I just, you know, went the normal bike. I found like the three, you know, the 13 pound, you know, fold up bike. It was really convenient. So that's what I used. 
for work. Um, and keep in mind, train-wise, you can get like a monthly pass, okay? So it can make it a lot cheaper and more efficient for you to uh, go to work and stuff and get like discounts. Discounts are always important if you're a money saver type of person. And also like, if, you, if your job's really good, and, and some are, some are not, it's really difficult. But if your job's good, they will pay your, your traveling expense, which is always awesome, right? Uh, yeah, so that's, that's more the city side right there. On my paper, what I got left is school. Okay, if you go to school, typically, like there's Japanese schools and with dormitories so you don't have to like go too far I mean, of course the dormitories and cost you you know that much more money but if you can afford it it's i feel i kind of feel like it's it's kind of worth it it really depends on how old the school is so you should always check the dormitory before you live there or even consider living there because like sometimes on the website they don't show you the inside they'll just show you the outside and some of the dormitories could be really old and if you don't want to go that route um you will have to pretty much follow the same route as working, basically. You need to find some sort of transportation to your train, take your train, and then transportation to your school. It's the same route as the work route, so. Uh, living in the countryside, let's talk about that for a minute, because like, let's say you get hired as an ALT here, okay? One of my buddies recently just got hired as an ALT. When I came from college, I did it for a bit of time too. So I got hired as an ALT and the first place they shoved me is in the middle of the countryside. So your first assignment's gonna be for maybe six months to a year and you're gonna be stuck in the middle of nowhere, okay? If you're lucky, you'll be assigned to like somewhere cool like, you know, Tokyo or something. But I got assigned to the countryside in the middle of nowhere. My buddy just came, he got assigned to the countryside in the middle of nowhere. And in the countryside, the train's a bit different. So for example, on the weekends if we went out, uh, the train would stop at 11, right? So you're sitting there partying and doing your thing, but if you miss your train in the countryside, there are no hotels around, okay? <laughs> there's no capsule hotels. There's no McDonald's to pass out at. So in the countryside, you gotta be very, very careful when you're like going out and partying. If you're not a partier, then you don't have to worry at all. I'm just letting you know that, you know, it's, it's just a lot different in the countryside. I, I highly recommend just flat out getting a car in the countryside. And I'm not gonna talk about cars in this transportation video because I actually don't have my driver's license. When I do get it, maybe I'll make a video for that in particular. I have buddies and friends that got their license. They, they applied for international license first and then that gives you a certain amount of time to uh, pass the test here in Japan. I haven't done it, I just I have no need for it. I live in the city side, everything's that convenient for me. So getting a car, it's just more of a headache than a convenience at this point for me so yeah the, the time for the buses not buses sorry and i'll talk about a little bit of buses in the countryside too for trains is uh weekdays it comes every 15 to 30 minutes okay for the weekends every hour so it, it's it's way more inconvenient in the countryside everything's just slower it's not bad it's preference if you, if you prefer the slow life like the countryside it should be no problem. Like, I'm actually a country born. I come from the country. I lived in Seattle half my life. I lived in the country half my life. So I, I kind of feel like I can go either either which way. You know, I prefer the city side because I like excitement. But it's it, it's all your preference. And I'm just saying, keep this in mind. If you come here to work, your first assignment, depending on your job, might be you might be stuck in the middle of the countryside. It really depends on your job. So, uh... Anything else? Okay, buses, real quick. This is the last thing I'm gonna talk about. Sorry, this video is a little, I'm trying to make it as short as possible and give you the most valuable information I can, you know? Cause a lot of this stuff I learned as I went, like literally for the first two years, I wouldn't even take a bus. It's cause it had so much kanji. And I don't know, I mean, I was just fearful that I'd get lost, but it, guess what? On trains, I got lost anyway. So getting lost is a part of the learning curve. So don't be afraid to experiment, take buses and get lost. There will always be someone to help you. Uh, anyways, buses in the countryside, uh, they, they're they not too bad, okay? So they're very similar to the city side. They just don't come as frequently just like the trains. So everything in, in the countryside is just less convenient. This is why most people in the countryside have a car. Anyways, if you have any other questions or if you already live in Japan and you think I missed something, you can just put it in the comments below. 
yeah, if, if there's anything else you, you want to hear about in particular, I'll, I'll tell you if I know, and if I do not know, I will basically recommend someone that I do know that should maybe possibly have the answer. Anyways, peace until next video. Bedtime, actually. It's a little late here.